Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making the TikTok famous baked feta pasta. And before I get into the video, remember to subscribe and to click the notification bell. You're gonna hear the Oscars in the background. Not a big deal. Let me show you the ingredients. What's nice about this recipe is that it has very simple ingredients and not very many ingredients. So you're going to need small tomatoes. These are grape tomatoes. You're going to need a block of feta cheese, not the crumbles, but an actual block. You're gonna need salt, pepper, and then in the recipe I'm using, it was recommended to include crushed red pepper, but if you don't want that spice, you could omit that. You'll need olive oil, and then I'm going to chop some fresh basil to put on top. And of course, you'll need a pasta of your choice. The recipes I saw, many of them used this hollow tube curly cue pasta. Here's what it's called. So let me show you how to bake this. You're going to need a baking dish. This is a nine by 13, but any baking dish will work and you're going to wash your tomatoes and arrange them along the outsides of the dish. You're going to leave a hole in the center big enough to place your feta block in. Okay, so I've put my block of feta in the center of the tomatoes, and now I'm going to drizzle it with olive oil. You wanna be pretty generous with this since this is the base of your sauce. And then you're going to top the tomatoes and the feta with salt, pepper, and those crushed red pepper flakes. Here is the dish all finished with the spices before it goes into the oven. And this will bake in a 400 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes or until the tomatoes have burst and the cheese has become super soft. So while the sauce is baking in the pan, I wanted to talk about internet safety. And I thought it was a perfect topic to go with this TikTok famous pasta because it is a social media platform where this recipe became viral. And then everyone started making it, talked about how delicious and easy it was. This is my first time making it, but I'm excited to eat it, see how it turns out based on all of the positive reviews it's received on TikTok and Instagram and other social media platforms. So with that being said, social media is a great place to find recipes and create ideas and seek advice. However, there is a big negative to social media, which is the negative comments. And it's important to be mindful of the negativity that you may see or be the victim of, whether you are a teenager or an adult, and how that's going to impact you. The idea is to be social on these platforms, share your ideas, hear other people's ideas, educate others, and you know, share comments that are kind and uplifting and motivating. That's what we want from social media. However, obviously there are people out there that are going to share mean comments or put you down. So why do I, as a speech language pathologist, care about internet safety and social media? Well, it's because when you think about it, social media is social communication. And as a speech pathologist, communication, especially social communication, is something I focus on. I'm currently working at a middle school and many of them are starting to use the internet more and especially these social media platforms. And it's important to know how to react to mean comments and what comments are appropriate and inappropriate and keep that in mind whenever you're on social media and whether you are looking at comments on your own post or thinking about commenting on another person's post. It's something that SLPs are thinking about more and more, especially if they work with older students like teenagers and adults. 
and especially if they're working with those individuals on social communication goals. So what we see is that individuals with autism, Down syndrome, other intellectual disability, learning disabilities, dyslexia, children and individuals being bullied more and made fun of, it's cyberbullying when it's online. And we'll see that a lot on different social media platforms. And it's unfortunate, but it's the reality. As a result, it's important for these children to know, okay, how do I react or what do I do if someone says a mean comment to me or about something that I shared? And, you know, how do I respond if I need to respond? And how should I comment if I want to comment on someone's post? Reacting to someone's comment on something you shared. Maybe you shared a photo of yourself and you feel confident in that photo, you feel great. And maybe someone, let's just use Instagram, comments below your photo, you look ugly, or ew, this is gross, right? Not nice comments, those don't make anyone feel good. Depression and anxiety are also common with autism. And imagine what a comment would look like and would feel like for someone with autism or with depression and anxiety or with ADHD. It's going to make them feel terrible. So it's important to think about what would you do? What would you say? I would recommend if you are a parent of a child that uses social media and your child is the victim of these mean comments, really to step away. Don't respond because bullies feed off of that feedback. So if you say, oh, you hurt my feelings, they're going to retaliate and just keep going at you. What's nice about many social media platforms now is that you have the ability to delete comments that are either inappropriate or unkind. I think that's the best thing you can do. If you are a teenager and you're being bullied and you want to stand up for yourself, I think that's great. Think about, though, of the consequences of responding and how you want to respond. If you retaliate and say, well, I think you're ugly, that's not good, right? That might be how you're feeling and you have a right to that feeling, but that's not the best way to respond. You could say, you know, I really like this photo and I love how I look. I'm sorry you don't like it. And honestly, the positives outweigh the negatives. I can guarantee that if you post a photo of yourself, maybe you got a new haircut and you love that photo, there's gonna be a heck of a lot more people that like your photo or say kind comments like, wow, your haircut looks greater. Oh, now I wanna get a haircut as opposed to, oh, you look ugly or ew, what a weird haircut. So focus on the positives. And if you do want to say something, you know, say, this is hurtful. I'm sorry you don't like it and not retaliate. You responding to comments. Maybe you see a video, whether it's a friend or an influencers or someone else, maybe you see something on social media and you really like it. Great. You can say, wow, this is an amazing video or, oh, this is so cool. Now, if you see something on social media and you don't like it, maybe you see a friend's picture and you think, ugh, that makes them look fat or ugh, they don't look so good in that photo. Best thing you can do is to continue and move on. Don't go in the comments and say, ugh, that doesn't look good because that's not gonna make them feel good. And it just makes you look bad, really, if you think about it. It says more about you than the person that comment is directed towards. So those are my tips for internet safety on social media and just spread kindness. You know, what's great about social media, what I love about it is I have found a great community of people on Instagram. I found inspiration on YouTube. YouTube, when I find a funny video, it just kind of makes my day. And it's just a way to connect. It's important to use social media, especially as you're growing up. You don't have to use it every day or to some big degree, but 
if you're looking for ways to socialize, social media can be a great place for you. But just keep all of these internet safety social media tips in your mind. Check out this TikTok pasta, the baked feta pasta. I think it's gonna be amazing. It's a good thing to come from the internet. And our pasta sauce will be done shortly and then I will be boiling up the pasta. I'll put it all together and I'll show you what it looks like. So this just came out of the oven. You can tell the tomatoes have gone soft, release their juices. The cheese is melty and brown. And now we're going to add the pasta. And you're also going to add a little pasta water because that's going to help bind your sauce. The starch from the pasta has released into the water. Here we have our pasta going, and that will thicken up the sauce. And here is the finished dish. I'm gonna go ahead and have a taste and let you know how it is. Here we go. Mmm. This is delicious. It has a bit of spice from the pepper, the burst of the tomatoes, the creaminess of the feta, and saltiness of it too. I topped it with a bit of fresh basil. So easy to make, very simple ingredients. Highly, highly recommend making this. Until next time, see you later. Yeah.